Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, a upcoming game being developed by Game Labs uh, that is currently in early access and only available via pre-order through the company's website. It is not yet on Steam. There is a Steam page, you can check the link if you want to go ahead and wishlist it, but currently the game just introduced uh, Core Patch 1, which is the first introduction of the game's campaign, and we are playing through the campaign as the Germans. Uh, this is episode number, oh my goodness, or what are we at, five, uh, on our Let's Play series, playing as the Germans. Now, the campaign is very limited at the moment. It is, ex it is basically only a war, uh, so there's no interwar period or uh, politics or other things like that. Uh, and it is only available between the British and the Germans in the North Sea and the English Channel area. And so you can still build ships, you can still research, you can still assign ships to different ports, uh, but you can only fight a war uh, in the 1890s. And so we just started the war, it is 1890. We are currently running a massive budget deficit. I screwed up, was it last episode, where I actually ran out of money and so we got extra money assigned to the Navy, uh, but it massively hurt naval prestige, it increased unrest in our country, and made me not super popular. Um, we are currently at negative $4.2 million per month right now with $30 million in the bank. The reason we're so negative is in our last episode toward the end, I switched all of my ships to sea control. I was hoping we could trigger a fleet action with the British Navy by sending everybody out to sea, uh, thinking that maybe that would allow us to force a naval battle. But when you do send ships to sea, if we take a look at Oldenburg here, we set it back to in being, you can see it is about a $90,000 difference per month in um, each battleship that is currently at sea. Every ship that you send out to sea has a considerably cheaper upkeep cost when it is in port. So we'll need to keep an eye on that. We're not actually building anything right now. We just completed a new light cruiser class, the butcher class, which is an all gun class, uh, a fleet of thir they have 13 four inch guns on the ships. Uh, but no torpedoes. And then we also just completed the Wolfpack class of torpedo boats, which are very fast, 29 knot torpedo boats uh, with two torpedoes on them. And so that's the, the ships that we just completed. We are, and we are between turns right now, and we have what looks like a convoy battle between the British and the Germans. We have two cruisers available to us. The British have a heavy cruiser, two light cruisers, and uh, a transport. And I don't know what the, I'm trying to remember what the R means. I think these guys are repaired. So their crews have suffered casualties perhaps, or maybe they're under strength. I'd have to see what the R stands for. Is there, is there a glossary term in here? I don't think that'll be in here for the campaign yet. If we take a look at the help section. Hmm. Ship design, war, campaign missions, maybe. No, doesn't really say, as far as I can tell. Yeah. Also, one of the other reasons we are massively in the, uh, in the red per month is I'm currently spending maximum amount of money to increase our transport capacity, which influences our economy and also our tech budget. So we are trying to research things more quickly by funding them. Uh, but that is a major expense, so we can always adjust that stuff. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into this convoy battle. I'm not sure what to expect here. The Nuremberg is one of our new Butcher class ships, but that means they only have guns, which kind of scares me. And then our Colin class is one of our older class of gazelles that have torpedoes, but we're up against two light cruisers, a heavy, and ten transports. So I, I'm not sure we've got a great um, setup here. For success. Enemy smoke spotted to the west. So we'll go ahead and close our distance. The lead ship is the Nuremberg, which is one of our new Butcher class ships. So you can actually see all of these four inch guns on our ship. Quite a few of them. And if we take a look back at the column, she's an older design using six inch guns and turrets with torpedoes. So we'll go ahead and try and find the enemy. Nuremberg is a max speed of 21 knots. 
Colin has a max speed of 18.4, so we'll probably want to break the formation up once we get into combat. Just because the speed difference is pretty considerable and whatnot. Let's go ahead and have a tight formation. Let's go ahead and have the other ship in the rear catch up. If they can. Let's see, they're moving at 18.5. Okay. Enemy smoke spotted to the west. All right. We spotted the enemy. We're opening fire. What is this? It's a merchant ship. So the ship we spotted is a merchant. That's good. Oh, wait. There's a warship over here? No. Two merchants by the looks of it. Third ship spotted. These all appear to be merchants. Are they shooting back? Do their merchants have guns? I have not seen that before, but they do appear to be shooting back. Bastards. Why does it say warship? This definitely doesn't look like a warship. Alright, let's alter our course a little bit. Nuremberg has taken some damage here. Okay, we're hitting the, the transport, the Ulysses. Can't imagine there's any torpedoes, so nothing to worry about there on the enemy. I'm guessing that... I don't know where their warships are, but this is... Quite a few transports here. Ulysses is suffering a lot of float damage. It's 30% float. Alright, so we just sank the porpoise due to extensive fire. This is a convoy raid, really, in theory. We should also set our guy not to fire torpedoes. Assuming there's enemy warships to worry about. Ulysses should sink here. Alright, Ulysses is sinking. We're switching our fire to superb. So this is a good start to this battle for our commerce rating. Superb has already suffered 80 structure damage. No sign of the enemy warships. Oh, wait. There's a shell lobbing. So there was a... It looked like a long-range shell. Herb is sinking. Let's turn back into the transport fleet. If the enemy warships are off this way, I'd rather stay away from them. Um, we are really ravaging this convoy, though, so that should help in the war, assuming we can get out of this battle without too much damage to our cruisers. I don't really want to engage the enemy uh, warships. I'd rather just take out the transports, which does Im impact the enemy economy, and I think it also impacts our prestige and things like that. So Colin is coming in behind, or Kuln is coming in behind. Nuremberg is blasting away. These four inchers, by the way, I was unsure about the Butcher class's effectiveness against enemy warships, but dear God, these four inchers are like anti-commerce machine guns if you could assign your crews or your ship's commerce rating rather than just sea control and fleet and beam these guys would be glorious for that we just got hit by an eight inch gun on the nuremberg so probably for one of the enemy heavies off here let's go ahead and adjust course slightly we're taking some punishment but yeah these guys are blasting away we're taking some float damage too and they're shooting at two. Oh, shit. How do we take such serious damage? All right, Nuremberg. Use the smoke screen to save yourself from this enemy fire. I don't even know where it's coming from. Like, I mean, I can see the general direction, but we've had no indication of, like, actual 
enemy ships that would be shooting at us, just random shells coming in. You would think we would have spotted where those shells are coming from. So, again, the butcher is doing a great job of commerce raiding. Not such a great job surviving against any level of fire coming in. Got the colon is moving in. Eight. Oh, God. Can we get our engines fixed? Is this going to be a no-no, or are we going to flood the whole bottom of the ship and be immobilized? We have three engines out. All right, so the floor is sinking. Bonita is going to sink for sure, too. Yep. And we'll probably, I'm assuming, get the bulk work. The question is, how much is one... Why is he not moving? How much is one light cruiser worth? Probably not worth 10, dis 10 cargo ships. We are getting the flooding back under control. Bulwark sinks. Liverpool is left. Why is this guy not moving either? your goddamn speed up. Four minutes till we can get a smoke screen going again. Okay, so we've got the Nuremberg has its engines going again. I'm still not sure why everybody's just sitting here. I get the Nuremberg's engines went out, but I thought I detached the division so that it shouldn't have it shouldn't have made a difference. Like, god damn it. Go. 14 knots. Flank speed. Alright, here's the enemy warships. So I think the objective should be sink this last enemy transport and then get the hell out of Dodge. I don't have any desire to engage these enemy warships. We took a fair bit of damage to the Nuremberg. We're shooting back now. Little pools of fire. A little bit out there in terms of range. Nuremberg at 21 knots, I think, will be able to outpace anything the enemy has. Unless, of course, they continue landing hits on us. And there they go. Penetration and flooding. So we just lost another engine. God, I need more bulkheads. Trying to get Nuremberg out of there while she's got some way on her. She can make up to 4.6 knots. Turn away, increase the range. Let the enemy shoot at Kuln. Then we'll get out of there. Liverpool is ablaze up in the front of the ship. You can see up here on the upper right, burning all over. We are shooting back at the enemy heavy cruiser. Nuremberg is trying to repair and get those engines back underway. I can always finish this transport off of the torpedo if I have to. Yeah, Nuremberg, get out of there. Speed coming back up for Nuremberg. Up to 11 knots. Got a partial pen. 
She's about just shy of five kilometers out. Seems like the enemy accuracy is increasing. I have noticed that our experience seems to be going up on our crews, so perhaps we're going to start seeing more useful gunnery and more accurate gunnery in the following battles. Come on, just take the fucking Liverpool out and get out of there. Meanwhile, Nuremberg max speed currently is 11 knots. Actually, just shy of 12. So I'm trying to get her out of there. The enemy has basically stopped firing on her and is only firing on Kuln here. Without too much effect. Meanwhile, the Liverpool's about to go down. Under 20% float. That hit there may have finished it, and it did. All right, let's end the battle. How is that a defeat? We sank eight enemy transports, and it says it's a defeat for us? They get three victory points for what? 80% of their convoy's gone. Wow, what's the point of these convoy battles and escorting convoy ships if the convoys aren't worth anything? You're going to tell me the enemy lost 1,000 men on these ships. We lost 20. They lost eight merchant ships. We lost zero ships. We suffered moderate damage on two light cruisers. And somehow that's a defeat for us. What was the king on one of the surviving transports that got away? That's bullshit. That is a hundred percent horseshit. That's a victory. I don't I don't give a damn what the game says. Don't even give me convoy battles if that's if if the con if the merchant ships mean nothing. Don't even give me convoy battles. Nuremberg, light damage. Koln, light damage. Warrior, light damage. Aurora, light damage. Doesn't even give two shits about the rest of the merchant ships. That pisses me off if it's not clear. So what's the purpose of fighting those damn things? Just go for the enemy warships. Anyway. All right, they're up to 15 heavy cruisers. That's one more than they started the war with. We're at 10. We started with 9. I think they're down by like 4 light cruisers, though. All right, finances. 30 mil. Let's go ahead and move into 1891. Well, that was some random ominous noise that I don't see any reason for it to have occurred. We're into January 1891. No battles were fought. Apparently sending my entire fleet to sea control has no tangible impact as far as I can tell on the likelihood of a fleet battle anyway. Finances negative 3.8 million. Naval funds 25 mil. Okay. Transport capacity is back up to 100%. Your nation's economy and fleet need transport ships in order to function at full potential. The slider determines policy in building more transports. If you get your GDP higher than 100%, your GDP receives bonuses. Okay. So I guess we can keep it as is for now. Probably will. Actually, why don't we drop it to like a 1% increase? That'll save me about 1.3 million. Gives me almost 10 months of funds. Although we're not building anything. We'll keep the crew training up and the tech budget up. Research. Seven months away on armor quality. Quite a ways away on range finders. Engines also seven months away. We're working on cruiser designs to get bigger cruisers as well. Yeah. All right. Um, well, let's end another turn then. Not building or repairing anything. Whoa, we have three battles coming up here. We have another convoy battle because fuck that. Uh, the Irene, Rune, and Frankfurt cruisers and five transports versus two British heavy cruisers. An ambush, eight German torpedo boats of the Wolfpack class versus... Heavy, heavy, light. 
We managed to sneak close to the enemy with our torpedo boats. Should we try to attack? And a battle. One of our battleships, heavy cruisers and light cruisers versus two heavy cruisers and two light cruisers. Let's see. The Oldenburg, Carl Friedrich Carl, and Koromon. What ships are those? Let's see. Oldenburg is... What's their experience level? They're seasoned. The front Carl Friedrich Carl is a sidelets class. That's one of our new heavy cruiser classes, so we get the eight inch guns there. That'll be nice. Was it Frankfurt? No, it was the Corman, which is a butcher class. So we have no torpedoes in any of these any of these ships. It's all gun battles in the battle in the battle fleet. The good news is the battleship versus heavy cruiser should give us an advantage gunfire-wise. Carl Fried to Carl should give us an advantage over their heavy cruisers. Their light cruisers do punch heavy, and mine not so much. So we'll have to see about that. Let's do the ambush. Let's see if we can get our torpedo boats in and, and hurt their heavy cruisers and light cruisers. Let's see if we can get some torpedoes into these these guys. These are these are Wolfpack class torpedo boats. So we have Let me get all these guys on a tight formation. These guys are going left to right, right? Yeah, there. All right, let's get ahead of this, these guys. Everybody's moving at max speed. Torpedo range is nine tenths of a kilometer. Shit, over pen. Already took a hit. And another hit. Everybody going to be aggressive in this task force or in this line? They will be. We can lose torpedo boats. I don't mind that. Where are these guys going? I thought I told them to sail up. So we've taken damage. We haven't lost much speed yet, though. We're still making near max. We'll try and adjust course a little bit. See if that helps us get in closer. Oh, boy. Overpen and flooding. Now we're losing speed. Shit. I need to get the rear of my ship pointed toward them to launch torpedoes, but I don't know that we're going to get in close enough. We're losing a lot of speed here. We're down to 15 knots. Taking a lot of damage on this lead ship. Max speed on the second ship in the task force. Ah! Get any torpedoes away. The ship's totally going to go under. It's just a question of whether I can get some fish in the water. Everything's on fire. And we're... 
we're making like no headway. Where are other ships doing? Okay, well, that torpedo boat didn't fare well. Maybe we can get it out of the action. There's no way it's going to get in range. Penetration rudder damage, huh? With a two inch shell? That's like some swordfish luck right there. Right, these torpedo this torpedo group is trying to cross the enemy formation, which isn't gonna give us a great firing solution for our torpedoes. How fast are these guys going? They make Definitely slower than me, but a stern chase is a long chase. Torpedo boat is trying to escape. She might make it out. is sinking due to heavy flooding. So much for getting out. Let's try and... break their line. Fire your fish? You did. Torpedoes are in the water. I think they're all going to be behind. Looks like this enemy heavy cruiser fired torpedoes. Both fish missed. Can you turn? Get your goddamn fish in the water before you die. Oh god, torpedo hit on the torpedo boat. Fire. Where are my fish? I don't even know. Can you split the difference? Maybe I ran into my own fish. I'm getting hit by all these fish. Why are my torpedoes not firing anything? F like, you went right by the enemy and you didn't shoot and you had it as a target. This one fired its fish. Oh god. How are my torpedo boats just... I know that I'm not paying too close attention, so I'm taking a lot of unnecessary torpedoes, but still. One hit, two hits. There we go. Enemy heavy cruiser hit with two torpedoes. Oh, that heavy cruiser was hit by a torpedo. 
Maybe two. There we go. Now my fish are getting in, or my torpedo boats are getting into the act. I think this guy already fired. He did. Might as well head home. Although those aren't going to hit. Shit. Maybe this guy? There's a chance. Is that everybody? Has everybody fired their fish or died? Everybody except S14? Okay. This cruiser's dead in the water. 46%, 26%. Okay, torpedo boat, turn. Before you die. Is there a minimum range on these fish? Maybe that's the issue. Or pen destroyed torpedo. You can't tell me that you couldn't fire there. Literally, you just had to pull the fucking trigger. Alright, I hear torpedoes. There we go. So we should get at least one enemy armored cruiser. We will lose a whole bunch of torpedo boats. I don't know how valuable those are. But there you go, the Achilles is dead. We still actually have one fish left, or the Achilles should be dead. If I can get up on this other heavy, I will. And there we go. Achilles is sinking to heavy flooding. So one of the, what, 14 enemy heavies in their entire navy is sinking. And then another one is badly damaged, I think. No torpedoes, no torpedoes, no torpedoes. Okay. We lost five, well, four torpedo boats so far. Trying to close on this guy who's pretty much dead in the water. But then again, so am I almost. I have one torpedo left. I don't know if I have to wait for this reload. I, I should. I feel like I shouldn't have to because they never got fired. So why would they be unreloaded? But the game is funny like that sometimes. Okay. And we are flooding pretty bad. Inside torpedo range, but is he moving at all? Yeah, so we're not really yet. And I don't know that we're going to get any closer. Let's just angle off and maybe we'll get a chance. We're at 32, 32, 33, 34. The blaze stem to stern. I think my torpedo tubes might also be destroyed. They look like they're red on here, so I'm not sure I can fire another one or not. I'm definitely in range now. Let's speed this up and see if we get that torpedo out. Before we die. Nope. Alright, well, that's it. We lost four, five torpedo boats, for sure. The rest of these guys are out of ammo and crippled. Six. Can we get out of this battle already? 
Seven. Let me out. So I got one heavy cruiser for seven torpedo boats. I feel like that's a victory. We'll see what the game says. One of these guys, TBS 18, made it out without a scratch. All right, and we're going to jump ahead here to the end of this battle since we're just waiting for the end battle screen to come up and we're just sailing away with no one shooting at each other. Oh, never mind. Don't need to do that. End battle. And it comes out as a victory. So we lost seven torpedo boats. One survived. And we sank one enemy heavy cruiser. We badly damaged a second. And so we had nearly double the victory points of the enemy despite losing seven more ships. This makes sense to me, though, because heavy cruisers are worth or, or armored cruisers are worth a lot. Uh, especially in this era. So that's a victory for us. Medium damage to the Gibraltar. Achilles sunk. Sunk, 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 sunk. Wolfpack itself was sunk. All right. I really don't want to fight another convoy battle. We've got the Irene, the Rune, and the Frankfurt. Against the warrior and the war spite. Let's do the battle of the battleship and heavy cruiser and light cruiser versus the diadem, Lancaster, dispatch, and Durban. Battle. So we're going to have to hope that our better trained crews are able to outgun the enemy. Where's the. Uh All right, I'm going to have the Carl Friedrich join the battleship's division. We'll keep the corpsmen set to screening. Turn toward the enemy to try and close. So heavy cruisers coming into formation. I don't know where the corpsman's going. You're set to screen, right? Oh, you're set to battle line. Well, you might as well join. The division then at the rear. No enemy can or no captain can do wrong but to put his ship alongside the enemy. Oh my god, that was a lot of fire. Where did it come from? Oh, there we go. The enemy warships are spotted. Wow, we already scored a hit. It was a ricochet, but hit nonetheless. So what's this lead? This is a heavy, I believe. Newer turret style, looks like. I wonder if this is a newer design. All right, let's slow things down a little bit. We'll turn the Oldenburg away to get our broadside in action. So we've got... This is the light cruiser here on the flank. Another light cruiser here. There's the armored... And the second armored. All right, we have a 4% chance of a hit. Can't quite get all my shells into action yet, or turrets. So we're going to turn again. Just my lead ship it can get both into action here soon. All right, so remember, the battleship has four 12-inch guns. It has six-inch guns. Are these in the casemates? These are individual turrets up front? Or just two six-inchers, one on each side in the casemates? Five-inchers, one on each side in the casemates? A whole bunch of four-inchers in the casemates, and then a single two-incher by the looks of it. Okay. Um... Hit the heavy with some armor penetration with some four inchers. I don't think we've done a whole bunch of damage to the diadem yet. We're at two kilometers, so we're still well outside torpedo range. And the goal, obviously, here is to take advantage of our superior size, presumably our superior armor. This ship has... How do I see my armor stats? 
don't even know. Anyway. I know how to see the enemy. Not my own. Alright. Nice. 12 inch hit on the heavy cruiser in the lead. You can see her... Looks like her conning tower or her bridge suffered some damage. She's got her rear tower ablaze. And it's basically just a broadside to broadside action. The Oldenburg versus the enemy heavy. Our own heavy is shooting at the second enemy ship in line. At least with some of their guns. Their fire appears to be divided. And then the light cruiser... The Comeron should switch over to HE. Does that affect everybody? No. Yeah, the Comeron should definitely use HE. Those 4-inch guns aren't going to penetrate that armor very well. Alright, the Diadem appears to be losing way. Losing speed. What's the hit percentage? 30? I don't want to turn quite yet. Because those are some good hit percentages. Nice. Engine 1 penetrated and flooding. Alright, well we're going to turn a little bit now. I need to make sure to keep all my turrets in action here. They're getting some penetrations here, but they're not doing a ton of damage. The enemy lead heavy cruiser is flooding. And they're not in a broad... Like, we were in a battle line here, so we were able to bring more fire to bear effectively, I think, than they are now. I probably could have con concentrated more fire. Let's slow down a little bit to improve our accuracy. I probably could have done a better job of concentrating my fire. Why am I not shooting at this second, this lead ship anymore? I want to finish it off. I know it's probably switching fire automatically because it's saying it's not a threat. Fuck, I just lost the lead turret. Well, the battleship's starting to take some damage. The heavy cruiser doesn't have very accurate fire here. She's dead in the water. The Oldenburg's gonna sink. I'm dead in the water. What the hell happened? Light enemy cruiser's still back there. Lancaster just took a big 12 incher. Oldenburg's turning away and slowing down to try and repair her damage. Lancaster's definitely getting too close. Carl Friedrich, I don't think she's taking a hit yet. Lancaster's at 50%. Turning away. Just gotta keep him outside a kilometer. Is flooding getting fixed? It is. The battleship must have superior fire control. Because she's got much better hit percentages. Or it could just be the seasoned crew. I don't think the Carl Friedrich is seasoned yet because it's a newer design. So like the Butcher class and the and the um, Sidelitz class all have greener crews whereas the uh, Oldenburg has been with us since the start of the war and so their crews are a little bit more experienced at 10% 15% penetration and flooding Alright, the enemy's turning away. 
Presumably because their heavies are taking quite a bit of punishment. Ricochet. Let's switch our fire back to the diadem. Lancaster's turning away. At least for the olden bird. Still out of two kilometers. This long range firing is, is working in our in our favor. So far. It would be better if my crews had more experience. All these ricochets. I wonder if we'd be better off using the Carl Friedrich with HE. I assume the 8-inchers would penetrate okay. Multiple fires started on the diadem. Looks like they're focusing on the battleship. So the lead turret on the battleship is out of action, so we just have the rear turret, which kind of sucks. Secondaries on the battleship don't seem to be doing much of anything. Not as zoomed in as maybe I could be, because I'm trying to keep a, a closer eye on this, this fight. Oh, Friedrich really hasn't been shot at or hurt much at all. Nice. I think that was a 12-inch hit. Yep, 12-inch hit on the diadem, causing flooding. Man, this thing would be over if I had four 12-inchers four firing on the diadem instead of just the two. Pen and a fire. Item is at forty seven fifty seven. So both these heavies have lost a fair amount. Cormoran's taken some damage. Quite a bit of fires here on the diadem. Salvo. Another overpen and a fire. I suppose we could switch the battleship to HE. For the next shot and see how that does. There's no way I'm going to be able to wipe the entire enemy fleet here. But if I can get two of their heavies, that would be great. Even if the Cormoran goes down. She seems to be the only one taking a punishment right now on our end. Light cruiser might be making a play for some torpedo time. pen. Come on, just sink already. Float damage is getting up there. They're below 30% flotation right now on the diadem, but their damage control is doing work. Their structure is below 50%.
Should we turn inside? Structure is below 40%. The structure, I don't think they can fix. The flotation can get better, but not the structure, I don't think. Several hits there. I think those are some secondaries. I think they were all secondaries, actually. We saw a fire. We saw some flotation here on the diadem. And our 12 inch is about to fire again if we get a if we get a good hit. Nice penetration fire partial pen. That was a big hit there. 300 damage dealt. The item is well still with us. All right, still outside two kilometers. I'm turning the heavy cruiser and the light cruiser around to come back for. A different pass, I guess. Okay. They're turning away. I'm gonna switch the Carl Friedrich to come in closer on this heavy. I need to finish off at least one of their goddamn ships. For all the damage we've dealt. Thirty-four, thirty-one. She's drifting out of those twenty percentage accuracy, but I don't want to maneuver too much because the twelve inchers can't easily come back around on her. Carl Friedrich has bad fire control on her. How's the um, Cormoran doing? Cormoran is hanging in there. 249 penetration and fire. That was a 12 incher from the battleship. How much damage can this goddamn guy hit take? Maybe switching away from the armor piercing was a mistake because we mostly get fire versus penetration damage, but the structure is riddled like Swiss cheese. What are we at? A 6% chance? We're at like a kilometer and we have a 6% chance. Switch back to AP. All right, we got some flooding going. Some fire going. Still outside torpedo range. They're getting some flooding on me. Well, their main gun is still hitting. They're down to 16% float, 15%. Just one 8 inch shell might do it. Penetration fire. I gotta think with all this system damage, they probably can't, or structure damage, they probably can't effectively repair damage all that well. Oh, Friedrich took a lot of damage there and is turning away. Float, flooding. Where? It says flooding damage. I don't know where. So his flood, that was temporary, whatever that flood damage was on my ship. Come on, guys. Finish the fucker off. Down below 10%. Down below 5%. 4, 3, 2, 1, gone. All right, we got her. If I could get out of this battle now, I would. Someone's shooting at the Lancaster and still doing some damage out here. She's shot up pretty good, too. You can see my uh, battleship shooting away at her. I've 
suffered some engine damage here. Can't even see the enemy anymore. It's too bad we can't repair the turrets mid mid battle. Looks like the enemy's retreating. I will do the same. I'm content with the, with the battle results. A heavy enemy cruiser without loss. Some damage to a battleship, which looks like it's mostly superficial outside of the destroyed turret. Light cruiser, I think, did its job mostly, and the heavy gained some experience and helped finish off an enemy ship. Overall, this is definitely going to be a victory. And they'll lose yet another one of their heavies. So that'll be two heavies lost this turn. That'll bring them from 15 to 13, I believe. And they have no battleships, so that's good news for us. Okay. Do, do, do. Just waiting for the uh, end battle thing. I'd probably be more aggressive if my turrets might, were both still on action on the battleship. But honestly, really at this point, I just want an end battle option. So this guy took very minor damage. Moderate damage on their heavy. I assume it'll say light damage for all of my ships. Maybe moderate for the CL. Yeah, unless anything happens of note, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward here to the end of this battle here, and we'll look at the post-battle screen. Okay, so we ended the battle, and we get a victory. 689 victory points for us, 11 for the enemy. Comoran took moderate damage, it looks like. Green crew, the uh, Frederick Carl Green crew, Oldenburg had veterans or seasoned, I think, going in. So now they're veterans. We sank the diadem, an enemy heavy. We moderately damaged a warrior class heavy cruiser as well. Um, so that's nice. Uh, and no damage to the CLs. But in any event, a pretty decisive victory for us. And so another 689 victory points. And that brings us to the convoy battle between a heavy cruiser, light cruiser, and two enemy heavies. We have the transports on our end. And uh, these are going to be 8-inch heavies versus we have one, or I guess our heavies are both 8-inch, right? They're both the new class, but our crews are going to be green, so that's going to be a challenge. Um, we did get some prestige back from winning these two battles. And we actually just took the lead with victory points, for whatever that's worth. The enemy's down from 15 to 13 heavy cruisers. That's one less, or armored cruisers. That's one less than they started with. And yeah, that's where we're at right now in February of 1891. Now, that being said, guys, I am going to go ahead and wrap this video up here. Uh, that's going to do it for tonight or today. hope you guys are enjoying our first look at the campaign and Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. A couple of interesting fights here. I actually kind of enjoyed those. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts below. Let me know how much more of this you want to see. I don't think we're going to play this to conclusion. This feels like this war would be a real, real uh, slog. Um, I don't even know what the victory conditions are or if they're even in, you know, in the current state. But uh, I hope you guys are enjoying the videos and leave your thoughts below. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer, as always, saying thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out.